All right, this quick uh, video on sine, cosine, and tangent problems. Uh, just going to rip through a bunch of them rapidly. Uh, not a, this isn't a lesson. This assumes that you've already uh, looked at the lesson that I have. If you haven't, uh, if you'll look under the view screen on, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, what you can do is you can see the link that'll take you to the lesson about how to do this. These are just problems worked out. So here we go. Let's try a that's all right. The way this works is I'll show you the problem. You can come up and click on the stop sign. That'll pause the video if you're watching this on YouTube. And then you try to work it out after you've worked it out or become frustrated. Then you come back along and you press on the go uh, button here. And that'll start the video and I'll show you the answer and the problem worked out. So press on the stop sign. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, we're looking at a right triangle. We don't know the angle theta, but we do know that whatever theta is, its sine is equal to one third. That is, the sine of theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. That's sine. So let's uh, come in and do something here. So the sine of theta, sine of theta is equal to the, that's theta, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And so uh, what I told you in the lesson was, I just remember the word Soho. It's a place in London and New York. And so the first three letters tell me the sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So, all right, it works like this. Sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite divided by the hypotenuse. You're going to need to use the second key on your calculator, shown here as a TI-83, and that allows you to pick the inverse sine function. You're working this backwards. You don't know what the degree is, but you do know that its sine is equal to one-third. So, uh, if you crunch the numbers out on this, you would have come out with 19.47 degrees, correct to two decimal places. All right, try this one. Click on the stop sign. Try to give it a whirl. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, we're dealing with an, an angle, and we're also dealing with the adjacent side. This side is next to the angle, and this is always the hypotenuse. So we're dealing with the cosine function. And the cosine of 20 degrees, we know, is equal to 4 divided by x. The cosine of 20 degrees is just a number that's stored in your calculator, or you could look it up on a chart. How we got that number is kind of interesting, but be way beyond the scope of what we're going to be addressing here. So we find out what the cosine of 20 degrees is, and it turns out that correct to three decimal places, it's 0 0.939. You can find that uh, by pushing cosine 20 degrees and enter on your calculator, and you should be able to get 0 0.939 correct to three decimal places. We now know that that is equal to 4 divided by x, or the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And now it just becomes an algebra problem, and we solve for x. Uh, we know that if, the, if we don't know the denominator, uh, but we do know what it equals, those two can just simply be swapped, and, and you can solve it out that way. I'll give you this example here. I know that 1 half equals 0 0.5. But let's pretend I didn't know that that was a number 2, and it was just an x to me. If I swap 0 0.5 with the x, I now get 1 over 0 0.5 equals x. And how many times will 1 half go into 1? It goes exactly 2 times. And so that equals 2, and we already knew that x was going to be equal to 2. So if I don't know what the denominator is in a fraction, but I do know what the decimal equivalent of that fraction is, I can simply just swap the two and then solve for x. So if we uh, swap the two, so we take the 0 0.939 and swap it with the x, we then wind up with x equals 4 divided by uh, 0 0.939, solving for x, we come up with x equals 4.256 units. And that makes sense. The hypotenuse is always the longest line in a right triangle. Uh, our adjacent side right here to the 20 degrees happens to be 4. 
which means that the hypotenuse being longer than 4 makes sense. Okay, click on the stop sign. Try to see if you can solve this one. All right, let's see how you did. Well, let's see. We know what the angle is, and we don't know what the opposite side is, and we know what the adjacent side is. That turns out that's the tangent function. So the tangent of 22 degrees, just some number that's stored in your calculator, is equal to x, the opposite side, divided by 7, uh, the adjacent side. The word that I gave you to help you remember that is toad. It's what I do. It's the mnemonic device that I use for trying to remember this stuff because the first three letters of toad, a word that I already know, uh, is TOA. So the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the tangent of 22 degrees, just some number that's stored in my calculator, happens to be correct to three decimal places, 0 0.404. And we know that that's equal to x divided by 7. I want to know what x is equal to, so if I multiply both sides times 7, then the 7, that's my denominator, cancels out. And so I wind up canceling that 7 with that 7. And so that means that x is going to be equal to 2.828 units long, whatever that is. And I look at it, and uh, does that make any sense? Yes, the shortest side is going to be opposite the smallest angle. And it happens to be 22 is my smallest angle. And we would then be, this would be, what, 78, 68. Uh, so this would be the next largest side, and 90 degrees is opposite the longest side, the hypotenuse. All right, let's see if you can work this one. We're looking for theta. Press on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. Well, let's see. We don't know the theta, so we know we're going to be using the inverse function to work this problem backwards. And so we know that we have the adjacent side, and we know that we're dealing with the hypotenuse. And so that's the cosine. So the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the second key because we're going to work the inverse cosine function. The inverse cosine is equal to 2 thirds. And so the inverse cosine of 2 thirds happens to be 48.189 degrees, correct to three decimal places. And so it's a really bad drawing because that's, uh, the drawing is much smaller than 48 degrees. But don't pay attention to the drawing, pay attention to the numbers. All right, see if you can solve for y. Press on the stop sign. OK, let's see how you did. Well, we know that it's uh, 35 degrees, the angle. And we know that we're looking for the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that's the sine function. So the sine of 35 degrees equals y divided by 10. The sine of 35 degrees equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The sine of 35 degrees, just some number that's stored in my calculator. So I push in sine of 35 degrees. And I come up with correct to three decimal places, 0 0.573 is equal to y divided by 10. Multiplying both sides of the equation here by 10, so that this 10 gets canceled out, I wind up with y equals 5.73 units, whatever they are. They could be inches, feet, miles, it doesn't matter. OK, see how you do on this one. It's just search for theta, press on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. We don't know theta, but we do know the lengths of the two legs of the right triangle. So therefore, we must be dealing with the tangent function. So we're going to be using the second key because we want to know uh, the inverse tangent. And that's the inverse tangent here. When we're dealing with this little negative 1 there, that's not an exponent. It doesn't mean uh, that we're uh, multiplying anything here uh, by a number. That's our way of writing the inverse function. In other words, do it backwards. We don't know what the theta is, but we do know what it's equal to. And so it turns out that the inverse tangent uh, is 1.428, because we're dealing with 10 divided by 7, which is uh, correct to three decimal places, 1.428. And that's equal to 55.007 
degrees. So our theta is 55.007 degrees. Okay, we are looking for the value of, or the length of x, the hypotenuse. Automatically, you know that it's going to be more than 10 because the hypotenuse is always the longest line. So you're looking for an answer that's a little larger than 10. Click on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. Okay, we're dealing with this angle here, the opposite side, and we're dealing with the hypotenuse. And so that's the sine function. So the sine of 63 degrees, a number that's just cleverly hidden inside your calculator, is equal to 10 divided by x. And solving for that, pushing the, the number, looking for the number in your calculator of sine of 63 degrees means that uh, the sine of 63 degrees is 0 0.891, and it is equal to 10 divided by x. We already know that if it's the denominator that is the variable, we don't know what that is, but we do know it's decimal equivalent, we can just swap the two. And so x moves to one side of the equation by itself, and 0 0.891 moves to the place of the denominator. Solving for x, we came up with 11.223 units, uh, whatever they are, and that makes sense that our hypotenuse, the longest line in a right triangle, is 11.223, correct to three decimal places. Okay, let's uh, see, we're solving for theta, we're trying to find the angle theta, and so we know that this is going to be an inverse function. Press on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. Well, uh, we're dealing with the adjacent side, this is the so the leg that is next to the angle, and this is always the hypotenuse, so we're dealing with the cosine of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the second key, and then you're going to press the cosine button, or the inverse cosine button, and then 4 divided by 7, correct to three decimal places, is 0 0.571, and that means that theta is going to be 55 uh, 0.15 degrees. So this is 55.15 degrees. All right, we're looking for the value of y. Click on the stop sign and see how you're doing. All right, we have 35 degrees. We're looking for the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. So that's the tangent function. Tangent of 35 degrees happens to be 0 0.700, correct to three decimal places, and it's equal to the opposite side, y, divided by 10. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by 10, I wind up finding the value of y, and that is y is equal to 7.00. You might say, well, why do I have the 0, 0 there? If 0 is nothing. That implies that uh, I have an accuracy of uh, a couple of decimal places there. All right, we're looking for the value of y again. Just click on the stop sign. Okay, looking for the value of y. We're going to be dealing with the tangent function. The tangent of 70 degrees is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. And so the tangent of 70 degrees, a number which is just stored in my calculator, is 2.747. And that's equal to 15 divided by y. I have a variable as my denominator, so I can simply just swap these two and solve for y. And when I swap those two and solve for y, I come up with y is equal to 5.459 units, whatever length they are. And that makes sense because this would be 20 degrees, and we know that the shortest side is opposite the smallest degree, the, the smallest angle. And so this one would be uh, 20 degrees is opposite the 5.4, and 7 degrees is opposite the 15, and 90 degrees is opposite the hypotenuse, which is the longest line in any right triangle. Okay, click on the stop sign. We are looking for the angle theta, and we know the opposite side, and we know the adjacent side, which means that we're dealing with the tangent function. So the tangent of theta is exactly equal to 5 divided by 3. You're going to use the second key, and you're going to push the inverse tangent function, 5 thirds, and you will find out that theta is equal to 
36 degrees. Click on the stop sign and hunt for X. Okay, we're dealing with 61 degrees and we're dealing with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. That's the cosine function and so the cosine function uh, of 61 degrees is uh, the cosine of 61 degrees is just some number and that number happens to be 0 0.484 and it is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So in order to solve for X I simply just multiply both sides times 13 thereby canceling this 13 out and X is equal to this number which when multiplied out becomes 6.30 units and that should make sense that's a little smaller than uh, or so excuse me it's about half of the hypotenuse and we would be at what, 29 degrees here and so this is 29 degrees and you should already know that at 30 degrees the shortest leg is opposite uh, the, excuse me the shortest leg is always half of the length of the hypotenuse and we're dealing with something really really close there so that number makes sense, 6.30 units. All right? Click on the stop sign and see if you can find theta. All right? Let's see how you did. Turns out that uh, we're, we're looking for the opposite divided by the adjacent. That's the tangent function. So the tangent of theta, in this case, is equal to 12 divided by 7. You're going to use the second key to find the inverse tangent. And the inverse tangent of 12 sevenths is equal to 59.74 degrees. All right, we're looking for the value of x. Click on the stop sign and give it a try. Well, we're dealing with knowing what the opposite side, we're looking for the opposite side, and we know the adjacent side and we know the angle so that means the tangent of 58 degrees is equal to x divided by 9. The tangent of 58 degrees correct to one decimal place is 1 1.6 uh, and you can find that by pushing the tangent 58 uh, on your calculator. Uh, 1.6 is equal to x divided by 9 multiplying both sides times 9 to get x on one side by itself I find out that the the value of x is 14.40 units. Your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome, encouraged, and appreciated. You may write to me at alanmorris at yahoo.com.